This program contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Whenever possible, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. For years, Robert Kelly and his younger brother, Brendan, had gotten together with a few close friends for an annual backpacking trip. But on April 18th of 1992, while camping in the mountains north of Yosemite, they found themselves in a deadly situation none of them had planned for. The remote locations that we go, there is nothing here in God's country. And there are no telephones, no cars, no roads. Everything is Mother Nature. Eric and Joe said they were going to see if they could go scout out a nice place to fish. We decided we were going to do some firing. Just fish. It's a great bunch of guys. I can trust each and every one of them with my life. I'll catch up with you guys later. Nick Mosley and the others soon joined 19-year-old Brendan, who was shooting target practice. Rob shot a few rounds. I walked up and he stepped back and saw his log sitting in the water, sighted on it. It was really loud. After I pulled back the hammer again, Todd goes, you want some earplugs? And I thought about it for a second. I said, no, like that. And I go, yeah, good idea. And I dropped the gun straight down, straight pointed to the ground. I took a couple steps, turned, and reached like this. I saw the earplugs right in my hand. I looked down, I saw the hammer was back, and it slipped out from my thumb. I couldn't believe it. I, you know, Nick's kind of still smoking. I looked at my brother, and, and about a foot, two foot long gusher of flesh and blood just started spurting out of my brother's body. I had taken my right hand, put it over the bullet wound to stop the bleeding. He was, he was losing a lot of blood, um, and uh, it was registering in my head. This was a 357 Magnum hollow point with hot loads that he had been hit with. He's dead. There's just, there's no way he could live. There was so much blood coming out that my hand slipped off the wound momentarily, and I could hear the air escaping out because the lungs were punctured. At that point, I looked up at Todd and I said, keep my brother alive. I've got to go for a medic back. I'm going for help. Keep my brother alive. It was like the worst possible nightmare. I couldn't deal with the stress of being there at the, the site. I just couldn't handle it. All right. Take it easy. Take it easy. I went flailing through the woods over brambles, through trees. I've never run so fast in all my life. And I, I didn't stop, no once. I couldn't afford to stop. Two of the young men rushed over with a first aid kit from their camp. We had to get this pressure dressing on him. I just couldn't release my hand, you know, blood's gonna go everywhere. So Eric slid it under my hand and while I was holding it. Um, he tied it off and then he added a second one. I was putting a lot of pressure on him, and I was hurting him, but we had to stop that blood. I knew there was a pay phone about three and a half miles away, and that was my goal. You know, and I'm running, I'm not running fast enough, run faster, 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 and I was, I was pushing myself, and I was alternating the Our Fathers and Hail Marys very fast, hoping that maybe the praying would help my brother keep him alive long enough for me to reach that phone. I'm going 
calling from Blankers, California. My brother's been shot in the back. What is your address? We're, we're by the Pine Coast Lake up the Valley Gorge at Lower Cleo's. I need a medivac copter, ma'am. Alright. Oh, what, what type of gun was he shot with? He was shot, shot with a 357 Magnum, point blank. Members of the Pinecrest Volunteer Fire Department were sent to the scene. A Mediflight helicopter was also dispatched from more than 50 miles away, along with a search and rescue helicopter. We waited and we waited. Uh, we assured Ben, you know, Ben, you're going to be okay. That's the only thing we could do. By the time the first rescuers arrived, including EMT Marty Rosenbaum, more than an hour had passed. When we reached the victim, I saw that he had held on with his friends um, helping him. I felt right in the middle of his belly, the whole outline of the bullet. That meant his chest had been violated and also his belly meaning that he would be having an increasing difficulty breathing and we were looking at very heavy internal bleeding. The 19-year-old victim had to be carried a mile through rough terrain to the nearest place where the search and rescue helicopter could land safely. There his condition was assessed by Dr. Don Dudley. We needed to transport him as quickly as possible. He was in a lot of pain. He had no breath sounds on the right side. He appeared to be in early shock. We know he's bleeding severely in his chest. I know he's bleeding in his belly. Somebody like that can bleed out and die on you very quickly. While rescuers prepare to take Brendan to the air ambulance waiting a few miles away, his brother Robert returned to the scene. They wouldn't let me up towards the helicopter because they were getting ready to take off. They didn't want me in the way. But uh, the feeling of hopelessness, helplessness, you know, when you're sitting there and you know that your, your, your brother, your blood that's sitting up there dying, that could have been the last moments that I'd ever seen my brother. He looked at me and gave me the thumbs up. And at that point, I knew he was still alive. And I, I just prayed to God. I said, oh, God, he's made it this far. Keep my brother alive. Please, God, keep him alive. Brendan was flown to Modesto Memorial Hospital. While the trauma team worked to stabilize Brendan, his parents, John and Elizabeth Kelly, rushed to be by his side. I was in denial all the way up to the hospital. This can't happen. He can't die. He won't die. I was extremely concerned as to the amount of damage those hollow point uh, uh, bullets, they, they just go in and they spread and they just bounce everywhere. Surgeon Tony Tam examined Brendan's x-rays to determine the extent of his injuries. After traveling through the chest and through the diaphragm, the bullet had destroyed the top pole of the spleen, following which it went through the stomach twice. So there were two holes inside the stomach. Uh, then it went through uh, the left lobe of the, of the liver and took out a chunk of the liver and uh, then rested inside the abdominal wall. There's a bullet and here's a fragment. Robert and Nick arrived and they didn't know if Brendan had made it or not. And so I, I went over and I hugged Robert and I said, he's alive, he's okay. And then I went over and I hugged Nick and Nick just hugged me so tight. I said, I'm sorry. I said, I know, I know it's an accident. And he just, you know, turned away with his face to the wall, and he was crying. This whole incident had been so devastating to him. And I took Nick into Brennan's bedside, and Brennan just put his hand up and grabbed Nick's hand. He said, I love you, man. And it was real hard for Nick to speak. He just, he was wearing Brennan's hat. He took the hat off his head and put it on Brennan's head, and he said, here's your lucky hat. When I went in to go see him, I grabbed his hand and he, he looked straight at me and uh, he told me, you know, you're my favorite big brother. Amazingly, Brendan Kelly has almost completely recovered from his injuries. He now spends time speaking to young people about gun safety. People don't understand how powerful guns are, how much damage it can do. 
that one bullet couldn't cost more than 50 cents, but, you know, hospital bills are well over $60,000 already. Even past that, you know, it could have cost me my life. I shot many different weapons. Doesn't matter how many times you shot a gun. Doesn't matter how experienced you are. Doesn't mean nothing. You can flush all this stuff down the toilet. It takes a, mo a moment of breaking concentration, and boom. Once that gun kicks and that bullet's down the down the barrel and, and going towards whatever it's going to hit, you can't take it back. I mean, if I could take back time, I'd I'd take back you know the the bullet that went into my brother. But we can't do that. And all we can do is just thank the Lord above that you know, my brother's alive and that this story has a happy ending. Yeah.